didn't they also get five Iranians? They will get five uh, Iranians uh, as well. Yeah, Jackie. Then why did we need to add six billion dollars on top of that? The, this is the deal that uh, we were able to strike to secure the release of five Americans. It would be great, wonderful, if we could just pick up the phone and call the Mullahs and say, hey, we want our Americans back. Send them back on the next plane. But you and I both know that's not going to happen, particularly with Iran. The White House struggling to defend its controversial deal to free up $6 billion in Iranian money in exchange for American prisoners, critics calling it a ransom payment. Let's bring in Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. He's on the Armed Services, Judiciary and Joint Economics Committee and also on the Select Committee on Intelligence. So the question to you, uh, Senator, was this a ransom payment or was it not? Well, John, it was absolutely a ransom payment. Uh, and while I'm grateful that we're going to have those Americans back home with their families. Uh, I feel very badly for the Americans in the future who are going to be taken hostage by countries like Iran because they understand that hostage taking pays. And the price is going up. You know, this is several orders of magnitude more than Barack Obama's ransom payment for American hostages. The Ayatollahs learned that if they take Americans hostage, as they did shortly after Barack Obama paid ransom, then they can get even more money, this time to the tune of $6 billion to fund their campaign of terrorism against Americans and our troops and our friends like Israel in the region. And I just want to say what John Kirby said earlier today is a disgraceful expression of pathetic weakness by the United States of America. That all we might be able to do is call up Iran and say, hey, we'd like our hostages back. America is a great and strong nation. Iran is a third rate nation. How about calling them back and saying, we would like our hostages back in six hours or else? Is that something the Biden administration has done? Is it something they'd be willing to do? I don't think so. You know, it's interesting to me that, that Kirby today made exactly the same argument that Matthew Miller made yesterday at the State Department to insist over and over again, this was not a ransom payment, this was Iranian money, they had access to it. And, and then, you know, in response to Jackie's question, in response to a question from Matt Lee of the AP yesterday, uh, both of them saying, well, we had to do it this way because Iran wasn't going to do this out of the goodness of their heart, which basically says, yeah, we gave them money, which was a ransom payment. Yeah, John, of course it's a ransom payment. Any normal Arkansan can see when you give $6 billion to Iran that they don't currently have, and in return you get American hostages who are unjustly detained, it is a quid pro quo. It is called a ransom payment in the language of normal Arkansans. And as also pointed out, we're also turning over Iranians. Those Iranians, by contrast to the Americans, are not unjustly detained. They've been convicted with, uh, in a court of law under due process. So mm -hmm. even a simple prisoner swap would still be grossly unjust because, again, the Americans in Iran have done nothing wrong. So it's doubly dangerous because of the precedent it sets, encouraging not just Iran, but other rogue nations to take more, American host more Americans hostage in the future. So, so here's the other point that the White House is making, that, oh, well, this, this money, which was frozen in South Korean bank accounts, is going to be transferred to Qatar, and we are going to have strict controls over how it's used which the Iranian president, Ibrahim Raisi, said this about to NBC. Listen here. This money belongs to the Islamic Republic of Iran, and naturally, we will decide, the Islamic Republic of Iran will decide to, sp to spend it wherever uh, we need it. We are going to spend it wherever we need it. John Kirby says, oh, no, the Iranian president is wrong. Is the Iranian president wrong? Uh, no, uh, unfortunately, he's right about that. John Kirby and uh, other administration officials are simply misleading the American people. Look, it's silly to think that Iran is not going to be able to access this money and use it as they see fit. But let's suppose that it does happen. Let's suppose this money does sit in an offshore account. The United States can exert that control to ensure it's only spent on, say, children's hospitals and feeding orphans and widows. Well, Iran already had money that it was using to fulfill those needs. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to that money? That money will then be freed up to support terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah or, or uh, militias in Iraq and Syria that are attacking our troops or commandeering ships on the high seas. Money is fungible. So, of course, this $6 billion is going to empower and fund Iran's campaign of terror. 
So here's what the former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, said about this in an op-ed. He said, quote, this is the worst deal ever. Paying for Americans wrongly detained by Iran will only make Americans less safe in the long run and provides more funding for the brutal Iranian regime. These were lessons we learned long ago, but that Joe Biden refuses to learn. Whether it's the Biden administration or the Obama administration, why do Democrats continue to allow Iran to dictate terms. Is this a deal former President Trump would have made? Is this a deal that either Bush administration would have made? Is this a deal Ronald Reagan would have made? Well, it's not a deal that Ronald Reagan would have made. And we learned this lesson with Iran 43 years ago. Iran humiliated Jimmy Carter for more than a year because he wasn't afraid, they weren't afraid of Jimmy Carter. And literally the day that Ronald Reagan took office, the Iranian hostage crisis ended. Why? Because they were afraid of an America led by a strong and resolute president like Ronald Reagan. Joe Biden has made this deal with Iran because he's desperate to do anything to get back into Iran's good graces because he doesn't want Iran to go for a nuclear breakout before the election next year. He doesn't want Iran to take even more hostages, which of course this deal will encourage. And he wants to try to lower the temperature of Iran's attacks on Americans in the Middle East. But again, all this is going to do is fund and encourage more aggression from Iran, as it always does when you appease dictators. Senator John Cotton of the great state of Arkansas, thank you for being with us. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Thank you, John.